Let's open our Bibles to 1 Timothy chapter 4. I want to talk tonight about the great deception plan. Eyes open, no fear. I don't know if we'll use those titles or not, but I'm just throwing them out there. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, my heart really goes out, first of all, before we start, for those that are coming out of cultish doctrines that were really big in the 80s, 90s, and continued and actually still are on television. Many of these, I don't know, I don't watch those Christian networks anymore, but I, huh, I used to have them on 24-7. Uh, they're coming out of these things and a lot of people are not doing well. They're angry or they're mad or they're backslidden. And this is what the enemy wants. He wants to put these false teachings in to get people away from the Lord. And so I'm just kind of asking everyone, if you know someone that has fallen away, maybe this might be a good YouTube for them. We want people to, in these times, put their trust in the Lord. Because really, the Lord is what we have. And we can't keep our eyes on men that promise to be saviors. Jesus is our savior, right? So in 1 Timothy 4, it said, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter, te uh, latter times, some, doesn't say all, it says some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats. Isn't that interesting of what we're going through right now? Which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and by prayer. I want to encourage people, and also on the other hand, to let people know what we have is our relationship with the Lord. And regardless of what happens in the world, the darkness that we're seeing, the heartache, the sorrow, the beginning of sorrows, the things we have to make sure that what we're believing is accurate. It's very important that we follow the Lord and not follow some charismatic wackos that are going to heaven and seeing jello visions and all this stuff that's going on. It's just unbelievable. So in Ephesians 5.11, it says, Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. So what does it mean? I like to take a word and look it up. What does that word reprove mean? Correct. Correct them. Severely rebuke them. To reprove also means to warn and to counsel and mildly scold. So have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather severely rebuke, warn, counsel, and mildly scold. <laughs> rebuke them. One of the things that I've learned, and I've shared this, many times, and I want to share it again, is about Alice Bailey. She's known as one of the prophetesses of the New Age movement. And I want to share this because it's what has been happening, it's going to continue happening, of the great deception plan. And the Lord wants our eyes open, not to be afraid of it, but to see how much of this has already come to pass in her 10-point plan. And how it's going to continue. And this promotes a demonic agenda. And this is far-reaching. It reaches into the leaven of Herod, the politics, the leaven of the Pharisees, which is religious movements, all these different things that when Jesus was here, he warned us about. And so many people forget about the leaven of Herod. She was a writer Back in 1880 through 1949, she was an occultist and a, a theosophist, theosophist, theosophy, whatever. 
That word there in the Greek means, theos means God, and Sophia means wisdom, so it means divine wisdom. And this is an occult movement with roots in Gnosticism. And I wanna just bring up some of those things that I've talked about before because uh, some of these things people don't realize that some of our movements we came out of are Gnostics. Uh, we thought we could get closer to God by having this revelations with people that had visitations from Jesus. And uh, the thing that, that's kind of strange about these visitations is it takes you away from the Bible and it draws you to the man that's having these visions. And that's what we came out of in the 80s and the 90s and so on. But we found out now that it was Gnosticism. And what is Gnosticism? It's a secret brotherhood for spiritual enlightenment. In the Greek, Gnosis means to know through special knowledge. And this special knowledge is given by angels and visitations and dreams, which brings us to look at Colossians chapter 2 in verse 8 first. Let's look at verse 8. And the reason why Paul wrote this was that the Gnostic teachers had infiltrated the Colossian church. And guess what? They're also invading our churches. They've never stopped. And this is why it's so important that we are discerning in this day and age, that we pray for discernment and help as many people as we can. We are to preach the gospel. And this is the most important thing I think we can do, is to preach truth, expose error, and to get people on that relationship with the Lord that's not spooky wooky, that's not promising, oh, you know, you are never gonna get sick, you're never gonna go through hard times, if you just have enough faith, none of these things are gonna touch you. Well, people are seeing, uh, those, those are lies, those are Gnostic beliefs that you can control and manipulate God if you just use the force of faith. We're gonna talk about that just a little bit, but here in Colossians 2, in verse eight, it says, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily and you are complete in him. You don't have to go to another level. You don't have to go to a, another realm. You're complete. It's done, it's finished. Uh, these doctrines and these cults try to make you in charge and control. You, you just have to have more mind power. Really what it is is Christian science in faith terms, which many of us were in and came out of. Hallelujah, if you've come out of it. But we're still trying to get people out of it. So many people are so deeply rooted in it and they're confused. They don't understand why it's not working for them. And then in verse 18, it says, let no man beguile you or deceive you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels. This is what they were doing. They were turning their attention, their focus away from the Lord and onto angels. And what are the prophets are saying? Boy, we used to be into that. What are the prophets saying now? What's, what's happening? What's the latest new thing? The worshiping of angels intruding into those which he hath not in, intruding into those things which he hath not seen vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind and not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together increased with the increase of god so here we see that Paul was warning again of these Gnostic teachers that had infiltrated these churches. And this is a warning also for us today. The Gnostics, then and now, put feeling and experiences and angelic visitations, so-called, over scriptures. They say that they believe the Bible, but when you listen to them, they might throw a verse here and there, but they're really going to tell you about their angelic visitation they had, or they're going to talk to you about the dream they had, 
or the so-called revival that they're, they're, that's coming. They lived by these extra biblical revelations and these are the Gnostics and they're with us today. And many of them, they have been on television and it, they went into mainstream Christianity. The enemy wants to erode our confidence in the Bible, have us following men, and we have to come back to the simplicity of the gospel. We don't need any wild feeling. Oh, God's here tonight. Oh, the glory's here. So we were so trained to go by feelings, even though they say we walk by faith and not by sight. They still taught uh, living by your feelings and your emotions and these extra biblical revelations. And they say God speaks directly to them. They don't really need to go into the Bible. So if you really study these people for a while, you kind of stop reading your Bible and you read their books because they have God speak directly to them. And after all, it's a new thing. And we don't want to miss a new thing that God is doing. This is where the trap is. In the Gnostics, they worshiped angels and they believe their revelations are more authoritative than the Bible as they believe God is always doing something new, new revelations. And what this really does is it opens the door to satanic influences. We're thinking it's the Lord and his influence, but we're really opening up doors to the satanic realm and manifestations. And this is where the whole kundalini, the whole laughing thing came in. And it's, it was a trap because they said, oh, if you don't allow this new move, you have a religious spirit. You're a Pharisee. And as a result, many, many people have went shipwrecked over that movement. The Gnostics today may be known as mystics. This is the big thing. And we're going to go into this mysticism a lot right now. They believe that you can draw closer to God by feelings and emotions and communicating with the spirit realm. So there's a lot of spirits out there. But people think that they can draw closer to God following these men and these movements and then subtly, subtly, subtly they disregard the Bible as really the authoritative word of God that it is. And we're not really being led by the Holy Spirit anymore. We're being led by the Gnostics. That realm is reinforced by the lies of seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. Mystics abandon reality. We were taught in our movements to not go by what you see. Don't go by what you feel. Uh, if you're sick, you're really not sick. If you have a cold, you really don't have a cold. Abandon that reality of what your body's saying. And if you have faith, you can overrule your feelings. This is Gnosticism that we have been taught in the name of Christianity mainstream for many years. The mystics abandon reality and what's reality as things really are. How do we pray? We pray in the Bible says to ask. We were taught to command. We were taught to demand. We were taught to decree. So we have all this power and authority in ourselves. We really don't need God. All we needed was the right words, the right thoughts, and we could change our reality. That's what we were taught. And how do we change our reality? Through the faith, force, forces, like the force of faith. That you use words to manipulate to receive health, wealth, and success. The word of faith movement, now it's combined with the new apostolic reformation, all these, the latter reign, all these different things, uh, has its roots, and listen closely, it has its roots in new thought that promotes the idea of positive thinking and mental positivity. And that if you are negative, you are going to have sickness and disease and you brought it on yourself because you had bad thoughts and you can never doubt. Do you know how harmful this really is to people when they think that they can control their healing and then they doubted and now they don't have the healing and it was their fault? 
They believe that positive thinking and the mental attitudes can shape reality. And what this really is, is mind power to speak things into existence. They base everything on a couple of scriptures. The faith force is used to manipulate their circumstances. Based on Mark 11:24, you can have what you say. In Proverbs 18:21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And any negative confession brings about sickness, poverty, and failure. And then you are labeled of not having enough faith. You have lack of faith. But they don't tell you how to get more. You just need more. Where the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, you instantly get faith and trust to believe God. It's such a simple thing that they've made a science out of the force, the force of faith. True faith is what? It's trusting in the Lord. False faith trusts in yourself. Everything nowadays is about self. It's about me. It's about what I want. It's about my dreams. Everything's, and the Bible says we're supposed to pick up our cross and deny ourselves. These false movements feed self. These false doctrines put emphasis on materialism. If you don't have a new car, if you don't have a new house, something's wrong with you. And they would measure each other by the kind of materialism they had. And of course, the preachers we followed had to have jets, had to have all this materialism, which was very sad, self. And then it's all about my will. This reduces God to a genie you can control. The Word of Faith movement is considered a heresy due to its distortion of teachings on faith, wealth, and through the force of faith. And what is that? That's an impersonal force you can control. Not anything about really having a relationship with the Lord. Lord, what would you want me to do? That, if you ask about God's will, you were said that that was, you know, you don't want God's will. You already know what God's will is. So basically, it takes you away from a dependence on a relationship with the Lord, and it puts you in charge, commanding God around, basically. And how embarrassing when you look and you see what we've all come out of. But what I wanted to share, that was just kind of a, a side note there, is back to Alice Bailey and the agendas that have been pushed. You'll see some of them have already been in process for quite a while, and others were still going through it. Her 10 point plan. And why is this so important? Because it's affecting politics, the United Nations, it's affecting everything. And it's the world that we live in being affected by these agendas. And as Christians, we're supposed to be the light. We're supposed to realize what's going on. We put our confidence and trust through these false doctrines in the world when uh, we should realize we've, we're passing through. This is not our home. We're not going to go in debt proving to other people that we have this great image. We have nothing to prove to anyone. But these agendas of the new age is to become the one world religion for the world. The new system, I'm going to call it, and there's 10 points that she was given by a spirit guide, which we now know is a uh, spirit, demonic influence. She was given this, and it's been passed on through different people, continues to this day. The first point, take God and prayer out of the education system. This is a spiritual attack on the younger generation. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says we're supposed to pray without ceasing. If you have grandchildren, teach them right away. Pray right away. Just little prayers. They don't have to be these long things, but you're not going to, be taught prayer in the education system that we have. And this has been going on for a long time. Number two, reduce parental authority over the children. This is an attack on the family. We see it more and more. You can do things without telling your parents. Number three, destroy the family structure of the traditional Christian family. We could go on. <laughs> Men can now have babies. 
Uh, they're pushing different words that you can't say anymore. Uh, things we've seen in the last five years have escalated to the point where even the people of the world can't believe it. Number four, if sex is free, then make abortion legal and make it easy. Number five, make divorce easy and legal. Free people from the concept of marriage for life. Number six, make alternative lifestyles. How do you bring in these other lifestyles? Through TV, groom them through TV, movies, games, the educational system. And the last three are very important. Use the media to promote and change mindsets. Use the media which we've talked about propaganda for a long time. Number nine, create an interfaith movement. We're seeing this as never before where they want unity. All faiths become one. Discard the differences, the ecumenical view. In the name of unity, we are all one. Number 10, get governments to make all these laws and get the church to endorse these changes. We are seeing laws change and we're seeing many churches endorsing these changes. Come out from amongst them and be separate. And in closing, this great deception is growing throughout the world through the false movements, through these words of faith, new apostolic reformation, all these different little cults that are going on, making some of these pastors into idols. And I just wanna say there are good pastors out there, but they're not gonna be promoted. It's going to be uh, the ones that go along with these agendas that will be promoted in this day and hour. But don't give up, because God always has his people. He always has a remnant. But uh, don't be discouraged if you can't find them in all the mega things that are going on. We have the word of God, and we have the Holy Spirit to guide us. And as I was coming through these movements, there were some things I did not buy at all, and then others that I did. But if you really listen to your spirit, the Holy Spirit in your spirit, you'd be grieved. Something wasn't right. How come the guy on the top of the pyramid gets all the money and everybody else is struggling? That always bothered me, that certain people prosper and no one else did. That's just like the world. But we have the Holy Spirit to guide us. So when he grieves us, when something's not right, listen Listen to your heart. Sometimes it'll just say, no, that's not right. And so what do we do? What is our hope? 2 Timothy 4, 5. This is what we have to do. We have to preach the word. This is what we're trying to do on this YouTube as long as we can on our channels. And yes, we've been shadow banned. We've been everything. <laughs> I want to thank the people that have hung on with us and are still helping us. And yes, we do need your help. We have to keep preaching the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove. What does that mean? Correct. We have to correct. When a false doctrine's being pushed and followed, it's not popular to correct it because you're going the opposite way of everyone else. But what we're supposed to do? Reprove, rebuke. That means disapprove. I'm disapproving of this teaching. It's Gnostic. It's a mystic. It's not the Bible. It's all based on a, the spiritual realm of feelings, see and know, all these different things I've heard through the years. Rebuke, exhort. We have to exhort each other. What does that mean? To strongly encourage others. If you can find a faithful group of people that are not walking in the ways of these false doctrines and of, of these uh, 
these agendas that are being pushed. And this is the thing, agendas will continually be pushed. Don't be deceived. I don't care. The green, all these different things I've been talking to you about, the sustainable dev development will continue, move on. This is their plans. What do we do? The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. We're seeing that already, that some people don't want to hear the truth. Well, everyone can't be wrong, right? But after their own lusts, and this is the thing, is this teaching stirring up a lust in you? Is it stirring up a lust, something you want, you covet, you're really not, you're just using the Lord to get it. But after their own lusts, they heap to themselves, Teachers having itching ears. They shall turn away from the truth and shall be turned to fables. What's a fable? It's a soft term for a lie. Or it's a false story. All their seed faith doctrines of you give me this and you're going to get this back and this and that. Uh, when they have multiple channels of being prosperous and they use you for it, that's a lie. It's a flat out lie. Watch, what do we do? We're supposed to watch. Sometimes it's grievous to watch. There's a scripture, I don't know where it is right now, but it says, the more we know, the harder it's gonna be. <laughs> because we see things, we see truth. It's things that we thought were true, we're seeing our lies. Wow. In our education, what they're being taught, and if you're a parent or grandparent, watch like a hawk what your kids are reading. Stay connected to what they're doing. They shall be turned to fables. Watch in all things. Be awake. Stay awake during the night. Keep your eye out. Endure afflictions and do the work of an evangelist. What's that? A true believer. Remain firm under suffering. We've never been taught how to suffer. If you read through the Bible, you're gonna see a lot of suffering. We were never taught. You only have victory. Well, where are those people now? A lot of people are suffering. They're suffering for many reasons. It's another message. What do we do? We watch and we remain steadfast, stay focused in hard times. Everybody I know is going through something. Everybody's family members, financial situations, jobs, health, remain firm under suffering, calm and focused, and also the temptation to quit. Ministers that are telling the truth, people that are telling the truth are so discouraged the people that are trying to alarm people and wake them up are so tired because they keep blowing the trumpet and nobody wants to hear it. The prophets of the Old Testament were stoned. They weren't put on TV and they weren't famous. They didn't tell you how to get rich. They told you how to get right with God. They weren't popular. If you're looking for popularity, you're not going to find it in telling the truth. And the temptation to quit is strong with all of us. But I want to ask you, what else are you going to do? <laughs> if you quit, where are you going to go? Back to the world? There's nothing there. That's why you left. So remain calm, focused, and resist the temptation to quit. And let's pray. Father, we pray that you would help us watch we pray you would help us endure and help us work while it's still today, while we still can work, while we still can speak, while we still can warn, while we still can endure. We thank you, Father, for the word of God and for the Holy Spirit that you've given us to be an overcomer. In Jesus' name. Everyone said? To watch Roberta's messages, you can see her on YouTube at Roberta Morrison. Roberta Morrison 2, The Backup Channel, Living in His Presence Church on Rumble.
and at the livinginhispresence.org website where you can see all the messages and download them as free audio mp3s. If you would like to contribute to this ministry, go to the main webpage and on the top right is a give button. Thank you and see you next time.